Good day, everybody. I'm Lord Zadam, and this is episode whatever. So yeah, let's begin. The sound of my alarm brings me out of a dream involving pirates and some other stuff I can't really remember. Of course it did. I'm a little bleary-eyed and it feels like it takes me longer than usual to get dressed and down to the track. A glance at my watch reveals that I was right and I am in fact running a little late. The thing is, there's no Amy! That's odd. She should be here. She's def she definitely should be here. I mean, I was late. <clears throat> I guess I wasn't the only one who had trouble getting up this morning. The thought crossed my mind that it never quite stopped raining yesterday. Did she go running anyway? Well, wouldn't put it past her. It seems likely. Emmy's a lot of things, but cautious isn't one of them. She probably figured the rain wouldn't stop, and that's why she was so adamant about running alone. Still, I would have gladly run with her, even if it was in the rain. Stand in the rain. Heck, if anything, I would have been able to convince her to come in once it got really bad. That would be why she didn't want me to come along, of course. Even so, I can't help wanting to know where she is. Well, nothing for it. I better stretch and run and hope that Emmy shows up with a grin and an excuse. On my cooldown lap, I'm forced to admit that Emmy isn't showing up. Ah. Furthermore, I have no idea where she is. Anxiety gnaws at me while at the same time I wonder just why I'm so worried over her. The run helped to take my mind off of it for a little while, but now that I'm finished, I'm back to worrying. It was weird not having her here. Downright unnerving. It suddenly dawns on me that I've been running to hang out with Emmy as much as I've been running to stay healthy. Probably more to be with Emmy now that I think of it. It's one of those things that are completely obvious, yet somehow I never realised it. Click, damn you. She really is someone I enjoy being with. As revelations go, it's hardly world shaking. All the same, I find myself slightly shocked. When did this happen? Well, no time to think about it. Though I want to ponder this new development, I have a greater desire to find out what's happened to Emmy. I'll ask the nurse when I stop in to see him. Nursey boy! Well, you seem to be in good shape yourself. That's good to hear. I replace my shirt and stand to leave as usual. Except, instead of leaving, I ask a question. Hey, where's Emmy? She didn't show up this morning. Is she okay? While I try valiantly to conceal the anxiety in my voice, the nurse's expression suggests that I failed miserably. You mean she didn't tell you? She's sick in bed. What? Sick? The nurse shrugs. Yeah, she came to my office early this morning with a fever. To be honest, I'm surprised she made it here. She was burning up when she arrived. I believe she'd planned to let you know, but she asked me to tell you. Oh, shoot. <laughs> the nurse gives me a sheepish smile that seems to at least partially sincere. I told her I'd stop by the track to let you know, in case she forgot to. Sorry about that. But we don't need to tell Emmy I forgot, right? I return the nurse a smile with a devious one of mine, my own. Oh, of course not. This is fine blackmail material. I'll save it whenever I need a favour from you. The nurse laughs. Well, I guess I deserve that. But you know, I've got tons of blackmail on you that you're not even aware of. Oh shit! So don't push your luck, okay? My expression earns another laugh from the nurse. I'm just kidding, this out. But seriously, don't tell Amy I forgot, okay? Your secret is safe for me. Oh good, now go on, get out of here. Wait, I've got one more question. Shoot. Is she going to be okay? It's a fever, of course she is! Oh yeah, definitely. Her fever was high, but it 
was already starting to go down by the time she came by my office. I'll probably check up on her again at lunch, to be sure, but I expect she'll be up and about by the evening, no matter what I tell her. Hmm, maybe I should visit her after class. It takes me a second to realise I've spoken aloud. The nurse raises an eyebrow and gives me a searching glance for a moment. Hmm? Well, it might not be a bad idea. Hold on. Grow right back a minute. I'm just going crazy. Y you could let me know if she's taking a turn for the worse, I guess. But no funny business, you got it. I know what meds you're on, after all. <coughs> oh dear god! I think that's a threat against my life, but I'm not sure. Of course it's a threat against your life, he knows what meds you're on! He can make something look like an accident! Either way, I assure the nurse that my intentions are chast and ex exit the office. Interesting that the nurse sees, sees me as some sort of potential suitor to Emmy. Even more interesting is how pleased that makes me feel. I need to shower. The lunch bell rings and I find myself di disinclined to make my way up to the roof. After all, I'm betting Rin knows where Emmy is, and if that's the case, then I doubt she'd bother going up there. More to the point, I doubt we'd have any sort of... Oh my... Oh, what does that say? Scintillating conversation if she did. Chances are she'd prefer to be alone up there anyway, so I don't a so I don't accidentally ruin her train of thought or something. Unfortunately, I don't really feel like heading to the cafeteria either. So we're going to see Emmy? Oh, okay, maybe not. Guess I'll go to the library instead. I need a new book to read anyway, having finished my other one yesterday before bed. Maybe I can find more by the same author. I love libraries. That's a sin. They smell like dust and paper and ink. All these stories and facts and opinions crowded together in one place makes the air come alive with potential. I'm still alive. I'm not sure how to navigate Yamaku's library yet, having mostly stuck to books I brought with me, so I searched for the librarian to ask for help. She's not here? Hmm, I suppose she's not. Oh! Can't believe it! Yuko, looking rather distracted, suddenly emerges from one of the aisles. Uh, excuse me? Oh, can I help you? Actually, I was looking for a book. So am I! <laughs> Advanced cri cryptography. Cryptography? We just got it in and now it's gone missing. I'm really, really, I really, really wanted to read that one. Cryptography? Yeah, my, uh, that is. This guy I knew. No, um, not sure how to describe it. Skip to the end. He got me interested in cryptography, only now the book's gone, and I think it's been stolen. Sounds pretty terrible. Yeah, especially because now I have to search the whole library for it. Even though it's probably not even here. You seem busy. A little. She dashes off down another aisle, and I rein myself to finding my own damn book. Hmm, plenty of choices. Oh come on, how did I get lost? These aren't even printed books, they're all in braille. I guess that makes sense in a school like this, but honestly it's a little annoying. Oh right, I didn't expect Lily to be here. <clears throat> I'm sorry, is someone there? A little... A lighting? A litening voice drifted, drifts out from behind one of the cubicles set up for research. As I approach, I see that Lily's been reading a book while I've been stomping around the aisles. Oh no, I should be apologising. I didn't mean to make so much noise. My, is that you, Hussau? I've not heard from you in quite some time. I was beginning to think you'd forgotten all about me. Oh, that pouty face. Uh, sorry. Lily laughs in, a, in that refined manner of hers and shakes her head. I'm only teasing you, Hisao. From what I hear, you've been busy. You've been busy. 
Morning runs with Emmy and Brizaki and lunch on the rooftop, if I'm not mistaken. How did you hear about that? <laughs> yeah. Guess word gets around pretty quickly. It's like an infestation. That and I can't coax poor Hanukkah on the roof anymore. You three are always up there claiming the spot for yourselves. She chides me gently, though it's pretty clear she's just cheesing me again. Still, I feel an odd need to apologise. Sorry, we could eat lunch somewhere else if it's a real problem. Oh no, I wouldn't worry about it. Hanako and I have other things to do at lunch too. Such as read in the library, as you can see. Oh, Hanako's here too? I didn't see her. Lily smiles a bit... Am I enigmatically? Oh, she's around somewhere. But I'm surprised to sound. You're in here instead of that there. What brings you to the library? I wonder if it's Hanukkah's birthday. No, Lily would be in Scotland. Well, Emmy's ill, so there's no lunch on the rooftop to keep me occupied. Lily raised an eyebrow at my statement before giving another chuckle. My poor Rin must feel left out. It's not like that. <laughs> ah, but I'm sure it isn't. Emmy tends to be the life of what, whatever group she's in. It's a shame to hear she's fallen ill. Will she be okay? Somehow I get the feeling that Lily's just inquiring out of politeness, but I respond anyway. The nurse thinks so. I'm going to swing by and see how she's doing after school myself. Another ra raised eyebrow. My, what a noble gentleman you are, Sal. It's nothing really. Just checking up on a friend after all. Ah, so it's just friends, is it? How disappointing. Oh, God. I blush, glad that Lily can't see it. But somehow she knows that I've been flustered by her comment anyway and laughs. I'm sorry, Sal. I'm teasing you again. Please do tell Emmy I hope she feels better, won't you? I glance at my watch. I glance at my watch reveals that I'm very nearly out of time to find my book. Of course. Hey, I've got to find a book before lunch is uh, before lunch is over. So I'd be so I'd I'd better get I'd better get moving. Jesus Mary. See you later. That was probably not the best phrase to use. Lily, however, takes my jaff jaff and stride. Until we meet again, Hisao. Ugly picture. I never, I never do, did find the book I was looking for, but I walk out with something else instead. Oh God! My stomach growls slightly, slightly, letting me know that I should have had something for lunch. Oh well, I'll grab something before I visit Emmy later. <sighs> it seems as if time has decided to slow down for the express purpose of annoying the hell out of me. Ca class feels like it drags on for ages. I suspect my being consumed with worry probably has something to do with it. Blessedly, the bell rings and I dash out of damage here. Out of class, drawing a few raised eyebrows, I'm sure. I spent the majority of the day fretting as un... unobstrusively as I could. Even though the nurse thinks that Emmy is perfectly okay, I want to see for myself. It doesn't take long to get to the girls' dormitory and make my way to Emmy's room. Standing outside her door, I suddenly pause. What if she's resting? I'd hate to wake her up, especially if she's still feeling ill. Then again, if she sleeps all day, then it could throw her off her, uh, off her sleeping schedule. But rest is important if you're ill, isn't it? I can't decide what to do, so I settle for standing outside the door, looking like an idiot. Then I hear Emmy's voice from behind the door. Thanks for your concern, but really I'm okay. Is she talking to me? I see you at practice tomorrow. Guess not. Still clearly she's not asleep, so I, so I can knock, knock without worry. Oh god, it's her captain. Bastard. So 
So why is this clenched feel? So why is this clenched feeling in my gut? I wasn't nervous about dropping by the other day, so why today? Granted, I still haven't really had time to figure out this newfound interest in Emmy's well-being. I don't have a lot of experience in this matter, in the matter, of course, but certainly this seems to be beyond feelings of mere friendship. But could I take that step? Could I even bring myself to risk what I have right now? I mean, it's enough to be friends with her, isn't it? Either way, shouldn't I just open the door and see how she's doing? That's why I came here, right? What if she's not dressed yet? Then just knock! Oh my... The image that flashes through my mind causes my heart to skip a beat, literally. I should probably not ever think those thoughts again, not if I want to avoid a heart attack. I suddenly realise I'm still standing in the hallway looking like an idiot. Emmy still seems to be in the middle of a conversation, but I knock anyway. Hopefully she won't mind the interruption. You worry too much. Come in, the door's unlocked. So it is. I open the door and step in, which is about where my thought process comes to a grinding halt. Emmy is sitting up in bed, her hair tussled, probably, from a day spent asleep. I think this is the first time I've seen her without those familiar beads in her hair. Her gym shirt and bloomers, obviously hastily pulled on before I came in, are creased and folded from less than proper storage. Her legs lay barely on the sheet. I've never seen Emmy without prosthetics before, yet here she is, slender legs terminating in stumps just below her knees. Click, damn you. But as odd as the sight is, I find myself more captivated by everything north of the waist. It seems that Emmy had finished her conversation with whoever was on the phone with her, and is now watching my reaction closely out of her own open eye as she wipes sleep from her other. Her expression, far from being embarrassed, is rather one of surprisingly wide, of a surprisingly wide yawn, one perhaps appropriate for such a small mouth. Click! A grin that, for a brief moment, seems almost flirtatious, tugs at the corner of her mouth as she takes the sight of me in. I can do nothing but remain in a state of fluctuating between fear, confusion, and not a little bit of lust. <laughs> oh dear lord, control yourself, boy. Emmy hastily. Really, bo really, really, voice. <clears throat> Cracked like a little bitch. Emmy hastily sweeps her hair out of her eyes, fixing it back into place before addressing me. You seem a bit caught off guard, Hissau. A wave of laughter erupts from her, and I find myself grinning and. Why did I do that? Rubbing the back of my head ruefully. Sorry, I've just... Never seen someone so... Dishelved. Look so attractive. Never seen you without your legs on. Never seen you look so... I'm um, sorry. Emmy giggles again and moves to sit up a little straighter. I'm caught up in the movements of her shirt, very nearly losing myself. I was wondering what your reaction would be. The nurse called and told me you were going to drop by to see... Drop by, you see. And I know you haven't seen me... Well, you know. Without legs. I respond in a tone of casual surprise. Oh, you don't have them on? I didn't notice. <laughs> this is almost the truth. I very nearly didn't. I try not to be swap or anything, mind you. Somehow I think Emmy would get offended by that. Instead, she sticks her tongue out and, at me and chucks a pillow at my head. Ass. The, the, why does it do that? I deftly catch the pillow and take careful aim before throwing it. Emmy laughs and rolls to one side, dodging my shot. The shifting of her shirt distracting me enough so that the next thrown pillow hits me right between the eyes. She's using her body as a weapon. I'm not saying that. I retaliate, of course. 
and once I retaliated twice, well, a war was bound to break out sooner or later. The War of Pillows. And really, when Emmy appears to have far better aim than me, well, it was just a matter of time before I'd have to resort to a suicidal charge. Gotcha. Eep! Oh! And once the charge was accomplished, well, of course I'd have to wrestle the pillow away from her. And with that kind of struggle, of course we'd wind up in this sort of position. What sort of position? Okay, control yourself. And so I find myself staring down at her from my position atop her. She's grinning, eyes sparkling with amusement. Maybe a little sweaty now from our tussle. Her chest is heaving up and down, sucking in air. A small bit of my brain that is not currently enraptured by the sight and the small and the smell of her observes that she must still be ill because her stamina is not what it should be. We stayed that way for a while. I'm not sure how long because everything seems to go fuzzy. Everything that isn't here anyway. Her eyes meet mine and deep inside I'm almost lost. Almost catch a glimpse of what? Fear? Longing? Hope? Why would it be any of those? Emmy? A cough suddenly cons convulses her, and I'm almost stumbling in my haste to get off, to apologise for everything. Sorry, I shouldn't have. It's fine, it's fine. She gives me a reassuring pat on the shoulder. So, what brings you here? Still, she's still breathing hard, and that causes her voice to shake slightly. Well, before I was so rudely assaulted by pillows, I came to see how you were doing. <laughs> This earns me another shove and I was and I very nearly fall off the bed. Emmy's eyes sparkle again and I wonder how I never noticed how attractive they are before. Consumed with worry were worry, were you? Her tone is mocking. Mocking haughty, teasing. She throws her arm across her forehead dramatically, grin still apparent from underneath. Couldn't bear the thought of me laying deathly ill. As we both recover from our brief raffle, wrestle match, wrestling match, Emmy appears to fall back on teasing me. Well, I wouldn't say consumed with worry, but after you didn't show up this morning, uh, eh, didn't. But after you didn't show up this morning, like at all, worse. <laughs> Emmy pouts, crossing her arms. Petulantly and sticking her lower lip out. My god, so many big words. In a single episode, I might add. It's not my fault. Nurse wouldn't allow it. Sure, he wouldn't. I completely agree. I believe you. Emmy sticks her tongue out again. You're such a jerk, is how? So, how was your day then, eh? Did you enjoy slacking off? Not really. The phone woke me up pretty early on. The phone? Yeah, the captain of the team called to make sure I was doing okay. Oh, my loot! Whoa, God! Click! Also, to let me know it was okay to skip practice. Good, at least she wasn't alone all day. Someone checked up on her. Although I can't help but think that it should have been me. Oh, that's good. He really keeps an eye on you, huh? Emmy shrugs. It's his job. Part of being the captain means you know where your team members are when they're not in school. Still, I guess it was nice of him to call, huh? Yep, sure was. Emmy yawns and shimmies down into a more comfortable position. So, how was your day? Kind of uneventful, you know. I went ahead and ran by myself and talked with the nurse about how you were doing. Oh, it's dark. It's I meander through the day's events, none of which are particularly engrossing. That's when I distracted that's when I'm distracted by an arm finding its way across my waist. A 
It seems Emmy fell asleep while I was talking, so I draw her blanket to cover us. Oh my. Did I skip? No, I didn't. She rolled over to her side, and now one leg is thrown over my legs, effectively trapping me. Oh no! Hey. It seems a shame to wake her, but I have things to do. I gently shake her, but in response, she only tightens her arm's grip on me and sighs a little. My resistance to this position crumbles rather quickly. The feeling of her body breathing steadily is both calming and incredibly stimulating at the same time. My breathing cannot decide if it wants to relax or speed up. Relaxation wins, and I find myself putting an arm around Emmy. I think I'm in love. Piss off! The word slips out and hang in the air in the air unnoticed. Thank God for that. At least I hope they've gone unnoticed. Emmy we whimpers weakly through her dreams, and her grip suddenly tightens again. For the first time since I've known her, I see tears running down her face. It feels like my heart is about to break. Instead of insti I instinctively tighten my own grip and stroke her hair in what I hope is a soothing manner. Words of comfort meaningless in this situation spring to mind. Maybe I should wake her. Are you supposed to wake people having nightmares? I never have nightmares. I can't for the life of me remember. The decision is taken from me as Emmy suddenly jerks awake with a cry. Oh my. Dad. This is more than I think I want to hear without her knowing. I quickly sit upright right and gently shake her shoulder to stir her. Hey, you okay? What, what a silly question indeed. Huh? What? Hisao? She shakes her head as if to clear it and quickly wipe her eyes. You had a nightmare, I think. Emmy shudders again and glances up at me a little cu cu a little cautiously, as if unsure whether or not she's actually up. Yeah, I guess so. You want to talk about it? No! Hmm. A speedy internal debate seems to be going through, going on in her head, which resolves itself with a shrug. Nah, I don't really remember much of it. I'm pretty sure she's lying to me, but somehow I don't think I should press the issue. Emmy shudders again and turns towards me, looking a little sheepish. Sorry for falling asleep on you like that. I keep my voice as soothing as I can. Hey, don't worry about it. You've been ill. Yeah, I guess that cold medicine just made me a little drowsy. I guess so. Emmy does not strike me as the sort of person who'd fall asleep at the drop of a hat. Rin, maybe, but Emmy's far too energetic. Emmy gives a half smile at my response, and then, just like that, she's back to her old self. Well, prepare yourself for tomorrow morning, Sal. We'll have to go twice as hard to make up for today. But I went running this morning. No excuse. Oh, fine, I'll be ready for you. <laughs> my body is ready. Emmy nods, satisfied. Good. I take this as my cue to exit. Well, I better get going, especially if I want to get enough sleep for tomorrow. I hop off the bed and head for the door. Hey, Sam? Hmm. I pivot neatly on my heel and face Emmy. Face Emmy. She opens her mouth to say something, and then, in another first, I see her falter slightly. She closes her mouth and opens it again. Thanks. For dropping by, I mean. You're kind of the first visitor I've ever had who wasn't Rin. Now that's surprising. I would figure that Emmy, Emmy'd have people dropping by all the time. She's certainly popular enough or so, I thought. Always talking to people in the hallways. Emmy hesitates again. And thanks for staying around after I... Well... A look of pain 
flits across her face. You know. It helped. She brightens back up and waves cheerily at me. See you tomorrow. See you later. I'm just about to exit the door when something makes me turn around again. Hey, Amy. Hmm? Anytime you need to talk, let me know, okay? Let me see taken aback by this offer. Her grin gets even wider. Do you think is out? See you in the morning. I exit Amy's room with my head in a whirl. Should I have even left? Was she really okay? I want to turn around and march back down the hallway, open the door and tell her. Good day.